I mentioned this at first service. I'm getting a little tired of this joke, you know, where, oh, yeah, you people are the few and the proud and the you know. The snow can stop. At, at, uh, at first service this morning, we, uh, we prayed twice for the snow to stop. Hey, and the sun's out, so, you know, it works, I guess. Anyway, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Savior's Lutheran Church Contemporary Praise Service this morning, featuring the vocal arrangements of our praise team under the direction of Ryan Hansen with Brad Browers on keys this morning. I'm Pastor Chris Hill, senior pastor here at our Savior's, and it is my joy to welcome you on behalf of the ministry team leadership, all the volunteers and folks of the congregation, whether you're here in person or watching on Cat7 or YouTube or Facebook or wherever you found your way into this space and time this morning, I pray that you discover you're welcome to be inclusive and unconditional because God's, that's what God's love is all about. And we're doing a couple of things today. We're going to take a little time this morning to acknowledge a little bit of our history. Um, it's the 50th anniversary of the first service in this building. If you didn't know that. And I think we've got to give thanks to uh, Joe Peterson, who has been reminding me about this for uh, a while now. Um, so yeah, 50 years ago, this was the, the first service in this building. So we'll be taking a little look at that history as a part of our service this morning. Second, um, second, we get to come to terms this morning with how the Christ in Jesus confronts our normal way of doing things with his incredible and just awesome love that changes everything, that changes us, challenges us to a way of living with a much higher call, maybe a, a golden call, like maybe the golden rule even, the call of unfeathered, unfettered love. We need to encounter that today, but in the meantime, would you rise together with me as you are able for our opening and praise songs this morning? Thank you. 
with me. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us and forms us, who redeems us and calls us, who unites us and sends us. Amen. Gathered in God's presence, let us confess our sins. Mighty and loving God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We seek our own way. We divide the body of Christ. In your mercy, cleanse us and heal us. Let the words of our mouths, the thoughts of our hearts, and everything that we do be filled with faith, hope, and love. Amen. Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven and you are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen. Would you pray with me? O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred we may so love, where there is injury, pardon and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
I'm Emily again today. She chickened out. She was supposed to be me. And again, they went and changed the program on me, so if I stumble over these words, it's his fault. <laughs> today marks the 50th anniversary of the first service held in this building. This is the longest Our Savior's building in continuous usage. <clears throat> the first building was destroyed by the 1918 fire after having been in use for 17 years since it was constructed in 1901. The second building, with remodels, was in use from its construction beginning in 1919 through 1923. It was in use until 1969 when the congregation moved here almost 50 years ago. The Sunday School has been celebrating 120 years of Sunday School this year. The Our Savior Sunday School officially began before the congregation was organized. Our Savior's Women's Group has been meeting in some form for those same 120 years, also organized before the congregation itself. As the old buildings on Carleton Avenue became overcrowded in the early and mid-1960s, plans were made to move to this location with a congregational vote on the matter on February 26, 1967. The ground was broken for this building on April 7, 1968. The cornerstone was laid on August 4, after site preparation work. Much of the finished work was done by members painting doors and doorways, staining the pews, pulpit and altar, painting the classrooms. The, the construction took almost a year, with the first service being held on February 27, 1969, with the dedication occurring on May 18th. Let us join in singing in celebration in, of this milestone, hymn number 509, God's Word is Our Great Heritage. These deeds are courtesy of Joe Peterson. Thanks, Joe. rise together with me please as you are able for the reading of our gospel for this seventh Sunday after Epiphany. The gospel is in Luke chapter 6 verses 27 to 38. It is the continuation of Jesus' so-called Sermon on the Plain that was began in our reading last week. Jesus speaks, but I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Or even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you, ex you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend it to sinners to receive again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. 
your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put in your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. For this morning's children's sermon, I would like the children to remain right where you are. Because that's where you need to be. So, and everybody can sort of think about this. So there's a whole cluster over here, but I need you kids right where you're sitting right now. And I need you to look around and find somebody who loves you. Hopefully that was pretty easy. because you're, you're, you're sitting with family, right? So was it easy to find somebody who loved you? I'd like everybody to do that this morning, if you can. Look around and see if you can find somebody who loves you. And those of you who are here by yourselves or here with somebody who you don't like, um, I need you... I need you to think about this for a second. I need all of us to have this sort of sense I need all of you to turn to all of you, this is going to be a little tricky, and say, I love you. Really, I need you to do that. So all of you, turn to all of you and say, I love you. <laughs> so that's what I'm talking about. And that is what Jesus is talking about in this part of his sermon this morning. And, and how real does that get? Um, it's, a little, it's a little washed out on the screens, but look at your bulletin cover this morning. This is not a suggestion. When you declared your love for one another around in this building this morning, this is the reality. Now, I'm not thinking that you, hopefully none of you saw your enemy when you were looking around this morning. But this isn't a suggestion. This is our identity in Christ. This is what Jesus does in us. This is who Jesus came to teach us to be. This is who Jesus revealed our purpose would be. This is epiphany. We're still in the season for epiphany for one more week. Jesus, the reality of who Jesus is being revealed to the world around us, being revealed to us. Jesus showing us who he is. This is who he's showing us who he is. This instruction from his Sermon on the Plain comes after Jesus has already been confronting and, and challenging with a, with a brand new interpretation the accepted religious and cultural practices of his day. I mean, a God who is kind to the wicked? The, the, the expectation, the, the, and I think it's then, and I think it's still true now, was that no, God doesn't like bad people. But here Jesus, God's word incarnate, God's word in human flesh says, no, our God, the God who made us, loves the wicked and the ungrateful. You say, what? And this just doesn't come out of the blue. Um, if you haven't done so already in preparation for your weekly uh, worship attendance, I would invite you to go home and read Luke, the, the gospel. We're going to be in Luke for a while. And the, the, especially the chapters leading up to this, particular, to this particular chapter. 
you haven't done that yet, go home and do it. If you need a Bible, grab one from the pew in front of you. The good news are pretty, pretty, easy, access, pretty easy access as far as the, the words and the terminology and what's going on with it. And what you will, if you do this, and, I, and heck, read the, whole, read the whole thing if you have the time. It's not that big of a book. I invite you to read the whole book of Luke. If you do this, I think you will find, especially in these first few chapters, you will hear, you will feel the tug of a brand new, even in our day, a brand new and challenging ethic. Jesus is, has been coming at the Pharisees and the religious leaders and the, and the, and the Sadducees. And every, they're following him around and they keep popping up like whack-a-moles. You know, Jesus and his disciples do something, they go, wait, why are you doing that? That's against the law. Jesus goes, yeah, no, it's not. And they, they, do so, they, go, they go through some, some fields and, and they're hungry. It's in the Sabbath day and they pick the grains to eat them and the, and the Pharisees are like following them and they go, Boop, hey, why are you doing that? That's against the law. Jesus goes, no, it isn't. Look at your Bible. You've misinterpreted it for thousands of years. Jesus confronts the religious and the cultural normal attitudes of his day and goes, you people are off base. And then he comes at them with this sermon challenging and you know you may go oh the golden rule yeah that's pretty cool that's, but it's, it's in this context of this whole this whole spiel of challenge to the way we normally do things the message version reads like this to those of you who are ready for the truth i say this jesus says love your enemies it begins with that love your enemies no no you love the people who love you right you love your family, you love your kids, you love your neighbor if they're nice to you, you love your neighbor's dog even if they're not. No, love your enemies. Let your enemies bring out the best in you and not your worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the energies of prayer for that person. If someone slaps you in the face, stand there and take it. If someone grabs your shirt, gift wrap your best coat, make a present of it. If someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more tit for tat. Instead, live generously. Here's a sim simple rule of thumb for behavior. Ask yourself, what do I want people to do for me? And then grab the initiative and do it for them. I mean, if Jesus says, oh, if you only love the lovable, do you expect a pat on the back? Run-of-the-mill sinners do that. If you only help those who help you, you expect a medal? Garden variety sinners do that. If you only give for what you hope to get out of it, do you think that's charity? The stingiest of pawnbrokers do that. I tell you, and he says it again. Love your enemies. Help and give without expecting a return. You'll never, I promise, you'll never regret it. Live out this God-created identity the way our Father lives toward us. Read that again. Live out this God-created identity. This is who God made us to be. God made us to be those who love our enemies. Live out this God-created identity the way our Father lives toward us, generously and graciously, even when we're at our worst. Our Father is kind, you be kind. Give away your life, you'll, be, you'll find life given back, but not merely given back, given back with bonus and blessing. Giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. Jesus isn't saying, well, this is, this, is, this is what you live up to. This is what you're supposed to be. No, no. Jesus is saying this is who you are already, who you were made to be. This is your created identity. This is your character. This is how you were made. This is, this, these are the talents of love that you were made with, that you were created with, that you were breathed into. The, the breath of life that is God's breath in you is that breath of love. That's pretty cool. 
and as cool as that is, the problem is, is that I've gotten very good, very good at forgetting it. I have developed a remarkable talent for neglecting how I was made and how I have been strengthened to love. I've gotten very good at denying the love God made me to be. And Jesus warns that if you live that way, there are consequences. And just about the closest thing to the Taoist notion of karma, that goes around, comes around, that you'll find anywhere in Scripture, returning evil for evil, being the, the human arbiters of justice, trying to be the judge that returning evil for evil hurts our world, Jesus tells us. It wounds our community. It breaks our hearts. It just does. You give anger, you, you get anger. You give anger in response to anger, you'll get anger back. It's just the way of it trying to be the judge, trying to be the human equalizers of justice may seem like the right thing to do at the time, but Jesus says this is a destructive equation. People are mean to you and you're mean back. It just goes back and back and back, and that, that equal sign will just keep on coming. Hatfields and McCoys. Your neighbor dog bites you. You shoot the neighbor dog, and it just... And it, Kid cheats from you in, in, in school and you tell them to tell the teacher I don't, I'm just, 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 revenge it begets revenge it just keeps piling up somebody always feels like they have to win and that equation destroys but then here comes Jesus with some good news that God's grace transcends that equation and lifts us up over and above it in the bargain, enabling us to rise above that equation and rewrite it completely. But the equal sign turns into a heart, and we love instead. We give instead. We bless instead. Jesus wouldn't tell us to do this. Jesus wouldn't tell us that this is who we are. Jesus wouldn't tell us to forgive and to give and to refrain from condemning each other if he didn't already know that that's who he made us to be. And that in the Holy Spirit, he gives us the strength to live that identity out. Click. <laughs> the song of the day today is a poetic reminder of that awesome truth of Jesus' love. Love divine, all love's excelling. We get to sing how the love of Jesus is the joy of heaven come down. It is the pure, unbounded love in our trembling hearts. It, it is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, that being of God in us. It is our liberty. It is deliverance. It is blessing unceasing. It is perfect love. It is the new creation, the great salvation. It is where we will be lost in wonder and found in love and praise. Love divine. All love's excelling. That is who we are. So let us sing.
Would you rise together with me to confess your faith? Let's use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and The peace of Christ be with you always. Take some time, share that love, share that peace with one another. I want to thank you for your support for this work and ministry of our congregation as we begin the process of gathering this morning's financial offering. Gratitude to you for your financial gifts, but also for your being here this morning, for your gifts and talents shared in the ministry in many and various ways. However it is that things happen because of your presence, Sunday school teaching, singing, playing, um, just praying for us. That's a powerful witness. To, uh, to, and, and a powerful gift to us and to you and to the community as we work together um, for the grace of God in our midst. You are all welcome at this table. In, with, and under this bread and wine is the presence of Jesus, the body and blood of Christ. Believing that, you are welcome to this table. You don't have to be a member here. You don't have to be Lutheran. If Jesus is here for you, he's here for you. So come and experience that grace. We'll be serving at two stations this morning, um, as we usually do here. Grape juice in the inner ring of each wine tray. If you need gluten-free, that's available at either side, at either station. Um, if you want to stop and pray on your, on your way back to your seat, you're welcome to do that. If you want to remember your baptism at the font as you come, you are welcome to that as well. The uh, flowers on the altar this morning are from a wedding we had here yesterday. Derek Singpeel and Greta Zutter were married here. Um, that I want to really invite you to keep the Singpeel family in your prayers. Derek's dad is going to be buried here tomorrow. His funeral will be here. Uh, Bill passed away this past, this past Tuesday. This afternoon, um, right after church here, there will be a visitation over at Atkins Funeral Home. Just keep that Sing Peel family in your prayers. It's a, an incredible emotional roller coaster to, to be on um, from one to the other and, and, and back again. So um, they, they appreciate your prayers. His funeral will be here tomorrow, uh, tomorrow at 11. Um, last week in the message, I mentioned a number of mentor opportunities. The descriptions of those were on the screens again uh, th this morning. There's uh, some information about that um, in the entry area again this morning. So if you want to take a look at those possibilities, that would be incredible. Would you rise together with me now as we come to the Lord in prayer? United as one body in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need.
God of all creation. All you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth your love in the bread from the earth and in the fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts of love that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence of love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, we pray for your church. Fill all of your followers, no matter denomination or affiliation, fill us with a spirit of generosity and care. Remind us of who you made us to be. Lead us to forgive as we have been forgiven. Show us new ways to be helpful and loving to others. Help us open ourselves up to who you have made us to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, we pray for this earth. Grant seasonable weather for the planting and harvesting of crops. Protect farms, orchards, and gardens from damage due to weather or misuse. Bless those who till the fields, those who care for livestock, especially in weather like this. And bless those who provide food, the far, those who farm and those who work with food throughout the supply chain. Help us to spread that food where it is most necessary to feed the hungry, to feed us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, we pray for every nation. And in those nations, for people who research and, and study ways to resolve complex issues, and then the leaders who enable that study and the, the results of that study to, to make a difference. We pray for those who teach peace and reconciliation to communities that are stuck in conflict. We pray for those who are affected by weather and actions of the earth, earthquakes and drought or storms. And we pray for those who come to help, strengthen them, protect them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, we pray for any in any need. We pray for those who lack adequate food and shelter, especially in weather like this. We pray for those who lack access to medical care. We pray for those who are unable to find gainful employment. We pray that your spirit would heal the sick and comfort the grieving and bring your healing touch to those who are facing death itself. We lift to you the grieving family of the Singpeels this day and others that we know need your healing in any way today and in the week, the weeks and months ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, we pray for this gathered assembly. Inspire us to be good stewards of the resources that you have given to us. Teach us to give freely of ourselves and to offer our lives in service. Help us to extend our support for your work beyond our walls to embrace the work of Bobby and Dave in the Dominican. Mary in Haiti, when her group is allowed to go, bring safety and healing to the neighborhoods there that are currently too unsafe for that mission to take place. Protect her when she goes and help us to continue to support that work. Help us to support the work of our synod with Bishop Tom and the ELCA churchwide with Bishop Elizabeth. All oh, to do what you empower us to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Whatever else you, O oh Lord, see that we need, whatever lies hidden in our hearts, whatever we deliberately leave out or neglect or what we've forgotten to tell you about or hide in our hearts, or think you don't care about. Help us to turn everything over to you in the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
As we prepare to hear and remember the words of our Lord Jesus, who gave us this holy supper, hear us, O Lord. In response to the call of God, the command of Jesus Christ, and the bond of our common faith, we come to the table. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread of the Passover feast, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. In response to the love of our Creator and remembering the death and resurrection of Jesus, our Savior, we come to the table. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. The grapes are offered to the youngest members of our assembly as a reminder to them of God's love and forgiveness. They are a gift that reminds of the same grace, the same story alive in Jesus' gift to us. Following our Lord's command and responding to our need for forgiveness, we come. Please be seated. In a moment, the ushers will invite you forward. If you cannot come forward, the first team finished will serve you as soon as we can.
rise with me, please, as you are able. Pray with me. We thank you, O oh God, that you have fed us at your banqueting table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life and love of Christ for us. Send your spirit with us now that we may set the captive free. Use your gifts to build one another up and in everything reflect your glory revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you to be the lovers that God has made us to be. And now may the God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Christ is your light. Thanks be to God.